Welcome back to chapter 6. This is our first example using Newton's law of mutual gravitation, but it is still going to use all of the understanding that we've built in the earlier parts of chapter 6. All right, so if we think about this situation, we have the Earth, but rather than being on the surface of the Earth, we are in orbit above it. Now, with this very poorly drawn circle, the thing I want to indicate here, so here's our satellite, maybe with some solar panels. The thing that I think is most important for our drawing to indicate is that we are given the height h, but in order to know the full radius of the circle, we also have to add in the radius of the Earth. So the radius of the circle is the height of our orbit above the surface of the Earth plus the radius of Earth. And any situation that we're given, if we are orbiting the Moon or Jupiter or any other example that we come across, we need to make sure we recognize whether we are given the radius of the orbit or whether we are given the height above the surface of the object and then the radius of the object itself. All right, so let's deal with this radius first. So the radius here is the height, so 100 miles up here off to the side. I'm gonna make sure we put this in meters right away. 100 miles, one mile is 1609 meters. And so we get 1.6 times 10 to the fifth meters. So 1.6 times 10 to the fifth meters. Plus the radius of the Earth, it is not on this slide and we do not have to memorize it, but it is in our lecture slides and it will also be on the equation sheet that you receive at test time and final exam and everything. We don't have to memorize core reference material in this class, we just need to know how to use it. So the radius of the Earth we can look up and it's 6.38 times 10 to the sixth meters. So our radius, when we add these both together in our calculators, we get 6.54 times 10 to the sixth meters. So we're gonna make a note of that because that's pretty important. It will be used in multiple areas here. All right, so these aren't really labeled A, B, and C on the slide. I'm gonna go ahead and label them so that we can keep track of what we're doing here. The first thing we wanna figure out is the amount of gravitational force. So we just write down as a starting point the force of gravity in this chapter, which is much more complex than just M times little g. And we plug in the numbers that we have here. So g itself is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The first mass is the mass of Earth. Again, a number that is not on our slide or our page right now, but it will be given to us at test time and it is on the slides in this section of the chapter. 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The smaller mass, M2, the satellite, that is 70 kilograms. And then the radius here is the radius that we've got down below. Oops. So 6.54 times 10 to the sixth, and extremely important, do not forget to square it. When we throw all of this into our calculator, and while it does look a little scarier than normal because it's got a bunch of scientific notation, our calculator handles all of that, and we end up with 653 newtons. And that is our answer to part A. Now I wanna pause and take a moment to recognize that 653 newtons is still a very large force of gravity acting on the satellite. If the satellite were on the surface of Earth, Mass times little g here, 70 times 9.8 if we were on the surface, would be 686 newtons. So we have a very comparable 
It's a small difference between being on the surface of Earth and being a full 100 miles above its surface. Gravity is still very, very strong when we are talking about orbits around the Earth. All right, so part B is asking us to find the speed this satellite will circle the Earth. All right, here's where it really helps us recognize that chapter six has built a problem-solving process that we want to continue to use. When we have circular motion, the net force acting on the object is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. When we are in orbit, I'm gonna write this in all caps, it's probably gonna be useful to write into your notes. In orbit, the only force is gravity. And that gravity is gonna be acting towards the center of the circle no matter where we are in our orbit around the Earth. So the only force is gravity and it will be pointing towards the center of the circle. So if we've drawn our satellite here with a speed tangent to the circle, the acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is towards the center. So we have that the force of gravity and the full force of gravity is equal to mass times V squared over R. Now, we will see in example 6H that we might not be explicitly told to solve for that force of gravity number value in a problem, but we might still have to do it anyway. So here we can put in 653 because we've already put in the work, but we might have to use the original g times mass one times mass two over radius squared idea there instead. The mass here is the object that is circling. So that is the satellite 70, not the mass of the earth. V is the thing we're looking for. And then radius, just like before, we have to continue to use the radius of the orbit and not the radius of earth. That's why it's worth making a special note to ourselves. That's why I use the underlining in red. It does kind of look like um, it's incorrectly spelled in Microsoft Word. All right, so we're looking for V squared. We are going to multiply both sides by 6.54 times 10 to the 6. So 653 times 6.54 times 10 to the 6th. And we're going to divide both sides by 70 so that what we end up with is V squared all by itself. And so V is going to be the square root of this mess, which we'll plug into our calculators. So this is 6.10 times 10 to the seventh. When we take the square root of that, we get 78.10 when we round meters per second. That is the speed of the satellite in its orbit. So that's part B there. All right, the last part, which I have labeled part C because it didn't have a label before, is finding the time it takes to complete one orbit. So we are looking for the time period. This is again, just like the previous problem, when we return to this understanding that there is a tool we've built. The speed in a circle is equal to two pi r, the, rate, the circumference on top of the circle divided by that time period. So if we're solving for the time period, we can multiply both sides by time period and then divide both sides by the speed. We get that the time period is equal to two pi r over v. So a couple of steps of algebra that I kind of glossed over here, but I'm happy to go through in more detail in office hours if you really cannot follow. So we have two times pi, one more chance to use our correct radius here, 6.54 times 10 to the six. Over the speed we just found, seven, eight, 10. And the units this is gonna come out to be is in seconds. But I am going to suggest that we then convert it into hours or minutes so that we can understand how much time that actually is. So this is 5260 seconds. But the key thing about that many seconds is we don't really think in terms of thousands of seconds. If we divide by 60, 
we will get the answer in minutes, and so we'll get 87.7 minutes, or 88 minutes, and that should start to make more sense to our brains in terms of how long that is, but we could also divide one more time by um, 60, and we'll get 1.5 when we round hours. All right, so this satellite is taking an hour and a half to go around the Earth. So we want to make sure that makes sense to us. Um, it is worth noting just for this section, and you can write it into your notes, and it's not necessary to have memorized by test time, that the International Space Station takes about 90 minutes to go around the Earth every single time. So it, it is not something that we're expected to know before this class, but we will be seeing situations where we are answering questions about orbits of the Earth or the Moon or Mars or Jupiter, and we want to make sure that we can handle those. And so it's useful to put into a time period that at least sounds like it's reasonable in some kind of way. 1.5 hours does seem like quite a short period of time to go all the way around the Earth. It would be pretty awesome if I could fly to um, Japan or Australia in that amount of time. But we need to recognize that we are forced to go extremely fast because of the very strong force of gravity acting on this satellite. All right, so this example is over. And one thing I really want to highlight here is, um, first of all, we've been making this list of the forces that are causing the circle. And it's, in this case, just the force of gravity, but it is worth noting that it's the force of gravity in the full and complete way, and not just mg. And the other thing I want to note here is that we are going to see that example 6h forces us to pretty much hit the same milestones without providing this part A, part B, part C additional structure and so I've said it in the lecture video once, but I'll say it again here. When we compare example 6G, you've just finished watching it, and example 6, 6H, hopefully you're about to watch, they are roughly the same set of calculations. 6H is a better test question because it takes off those bumper rails for us. It forces us to think about what we're doing and why we are doing it, which is always our goal um, but that really is kind of highlighted when we compare these two final examples from the chapter. So keep that in mind as you move on to the next example. And so I will see you in that last video for chapter six.